So let's recap real quick so we're all on the same page here. At the end of June, my motorcycle was stolen. Two days later, they recovered it and arrested the guy. So the motorcycle was taken to a dealership of my choice for an estimate. The dealership ended up deciding to total it because there was paint on the frame and I asked them to factor that in. So the insurance company contacted me and decided that they gave me an option to either buy it back for like something like $500 or to just take the full settlement. I probably would have bought it back if I had a garage to put it in, but I didn't have one and I wasn't going to start renting a storage unit to store a trashed bike. I just took the full settlement. So, uh, bike I decided to replace it with is this one. This is a 2012 XR650L. It's got 11,000 miles on it. It's got a big four and a half gallon Clark tank. It's got these Easton handlebars. Um, it's got a skid plate in the bottom. It's got this tail light kit where they removed the original plate holder. I mean, it's got almost everything I wanted, but this one's like brand new. I got this thing for 3,600 bucks, dude. Fucking ridiculous. There was an issue with it when I got it. I don't know what the deal is, what Honda did when they brought this thing into 2012 or whatever, but like it's taller. They changed the rear spring at some point and uh, they actually made the thing taller. <laughs> I was riding it at the guy's house who I bought it from and like I couldn't I couldn't get off of it. I had to go up to the curb to actually get off because like I had to put the kickstand down and then just kind of jump off. It was weird. So I, uh, I spent the remainder of the money on a lowering link, which is something I've been bitching about forever and something I've needed forever. I decided on the Kuba link uh, primarily because like, I don't know, it was actually pretty reasonably priced compared to the other ones that were supposed to be like super premium links. Like if you go to xrsonly.com, they have one that like, it doesn't come with the bearings. And with the bearings, it's like 160 bucks or something. The Kuba link came with bearings and grease fittings for like 130 shipped. I think this thing probably, they say it lowers it like an inch and three quarters. I didn't measure. Basically, I went from having to be on my tiptoes with both feet on the ground to having three quarters of each foot flat on the ground like just my heel is off the ground so it's a pretty considerable improvement so when their bike was stolen originally I asked everybody to vote tell me what the thing I should get and I was legitimately here's the thing I was kind of hoping that people would vote for something other than the XR650L because I wanted to try something new but um, there were some options for me that I could have taken I was thinking like regardless of what they vote for I might just get what I want but I discovered that like my options are limited like this is actually this is actually like the best motorcycle for what I'm trying to do. You know, it's like I want better touring capability, but I don't want an adventure touring bike because I, I think they're weird. I don't want one. And they're too expensive anyway. You know, I didn't want a KLR because I don't know how, I don't like how they look. And I didn't want a DRZ400 because it just seems like it's too small of a frame to be throwing all my gear on. It probably would have been possible to do a DRZ400, but on the other hand, I also figured most people on YouTube aren't running these. So I decided to stick with this. The, uh, the results of the voting were interesting. People brought up a lot of different options that I hadn't even considered. A lot of KTMs and some, some weird stuff like V-Stroms. But ultimately, the uh, majority vote was for the XRL. It was something like 33 votes were for the 650L. And then like the next, I don't, I didn't look at the numbers before I came out here, but I think like the next majority vote was like seven for some other bike. Of course the majority votes are for the 650L, that's why everybody came to watch my YouTube channel. You know, I want to keep people interested, but at the same time, this is really the bike that I, I want. And I, it took, I think it might have taken this experience to make me realize that I just, in the future, I need to get a, I need to get a luggage rack for it now, and I need to get a windscreen, and eventually I'd like to get those pillow grips back, because these grips are like aggressive little motocross grips. Anyway, yeah, I mean, I looked, I didn't really physically go and see any DR650s, but I looked them up online and like, honestly, man, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel the vibes. I didn't look at that bike and think, wow, I really want that. I looked at it and kind of thought, I think my 650L is cooler. There's something more, I don't want to say macho, so much more badass looking, in my opinion. And I don't really know what it is about it that makes it look that way. Honestly, I think it's the ride height, which is ironic because I just lowered this thing. I'm sure the DR650 is a fine machine. I just decided it's probably best to get another 650L, and it turns out that it's the better 650L than I had, man. It's like this thief, at the end of the day, this thief did me a favor. Like, as soon as the bike was stolen, I went on Craigslist and started looking at these, and I saw this one, and I thought, holy shit, like, that is, that is the one. And I kept an eye on it all throughout the situation, and finally, when the, when the insurance company paid me out, like, I, I, I looked online, the guy's bike was still there, and I called him, and I was like, I'm buying your bike. And, like, I just went down there, 
rode this thing down the street, came back, gave him the money and left. There was no shopping for other motorcycles. I just, $3,600 for a 2012 with all this shit done to it. It's got an exhaust, it's got a jet kit too. I forgot to mention that earlier. It's amazing. I, I suppose I wish it had less miles on it, but that's just because like my old bike had about the same amount of miles on it. And in, in, in a weird way, I would have been able to get more miles out of my XR650L experience if I had gotten this one with less on it. But who cares? I figure I am probably going to have this thing forever, or at least until this YouTube project dies. Maybe it'll never die. Maybe I'll be on this thing for years. <laughs> I, uh, I really couldn't be happier with what I just bought. I haven't been out here in a while, and I realized like recently on this channel I haven't really been going out and looking at cool stuff like this. But I came out here, my first video I did ever where I was actually vlogging, and I looked at these abandoned houses, and I'm coming out here again today to film the, uh, the reveal video for this bike that you saw last week. <laughs> That's trippy, isn't it? Pretty sure I want to go that way. It's a pretty cool place to live, man. This cool little house out here in the desert, dirt roads leading up to it. I was coming up here because I want to film my bike in one of these, but there's people here. At least some people actually own these. I think I went inside uh, this one. Oh, well, it might have been that one back there. There's a guy over here in a Harley. I'll wait to make sure he doesn't cruise around. I don't want to be talked to while I'm here. That's the thing about filming stuff. Like, people see you with a camera and they know you're getting video. They get really uncomfortable. I like to try to avoid confrontation. By the way, that's how far my foot goes down with the Kuba Link. If I'm one footed, I can put it flat. Before I was like this. Something isn't working with this. I'll tell you man, I've been doing this for a year and I still don't have a solid method of transporting my equipment. I've also never shown how I transport my equipment. Put everything in this shitty Walmart backpack and I make it work. So last year, I went into this guy's backyard. and walked around in his house pretty much the same. Maybe a few more holes in the walls. You know what? I think those are bullet holes. What else makes a bunch of holes like that that high up? Wow, this guy just missed me. Some of these things are in great shape, man. This would be a cool neighborhood to live in if it wasn't deserted. There is a staggering amount of feces in here. They look pretty intimidating. They sexy. <laughs> All right, team, I get out of here. I don't think I'd ever want a yard made of dirt like this. But at the same time, I don't think I'd really want to live out here and have a yard made of grass either. I don't really know how to make this look good. You gotta have like rock, rock designs and stuff in your yard to make that look good. Pretty cool shit, man. Still don't know the story behind these places. Although, uh, Arizona Desert Dog said he used to live in that house that I, uh, that I went into. The first one that I, well, I didn't go into it today, but the one I went into a while back. He said he, uh, at least used to own it. I don't remember exactly. Well, thanks for watching. This has been a, uh, sort of like the maiden voyage of, uh, this bike, you know, especially with that lowering link on. And I have to say, the lowering link has been a huge help in me putting my feet down, but so far it actually feels like the suspension doesn't really work as well. Something weird and different about it. I mean, I think the back end is way softer than the front end, and that might be well. But anyway, I'm going to follow Patton Road and see where it goes. Bye.